Hello, welcome to Zygma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for physics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from Exam Guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, Post UTME, YEG, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Kabupedia, BECE. JSCE, NCEE, NACO ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell and get updated on new videos. Are you ready for this class? Okay, let's get started. To a layman, heat and temperature is the same. Uh, so a layman does not really find the difference between heat and temperature. But I want you to stay with me in this lesson till the end as I extract the main difference between heat and temperature. And that helps me to welcome you to this topic titled Temperature and Its Measurement. Now, uh, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain temperature and its measurement, explain three temperature scales, State and explain types of thermometer, explain the concept of absolute temperature, and then solve a few questions on temperature. Now, probably you have seen this before on our lessons, but then we are using it now to explain what temperature is with respect to heat. You know, when we talk about temperature, we are talking about the average kinetic energy of the body which many people will tell you that temperature is defined as the degree of uh, coldness or hotness of the body. Yes, but that's not really a very good definition when it comes to what temperature is regarding its um, theoretical explanation or of matter. Now, why do I say that it is the average kinetic energy of the body? Now, look at this. This body is moving randomly. Probably these are the same body, the same body, but on performing on different temperature. Now, why are we talking about this temperature? We are considering, when you talk about temperature, you first of all consider the kinetic energy of the molecules of that substance. Remember when we talked about molecules, we are talking about the constant motion of the particles or subatomic particles of any substance. Now, if I assume that I say that this body, remember you are watching the screen, considering that the one at the top, bottom right hand of your screen is having highest temperature at 40 degrees Celsius. Then the one in the middle is 20 degrees Celsius. And the one at this part is about five degrees Celsius. Why? The one that is moving fastest is having highest temperature. And the one that is moving slowest has very low temperature. It means that, let's say for example, when a body is heated, you don't need to heat a body for it to have a quantity of heat. Now when we talk about quantity of heat, we are talking about the total internal energy of the body. But when we talk about temperature, we are talking about the average kinetic energy of the body. Now listen. These are the major differences between the temperature and heat. Another one you have to consider is that heat flows. When we talk about this heat, let's assume this body and this body, they are put together. When they put together, what happens? the heat will flow from this body to this body. Provided that this body has a temperature, let's say it has a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and this one has a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. What will happen? The heat from this body will flow to the heat from, to this body. Another one is if you are cooking, you, you take the, the spoon and place it on top of your pot. The spoon was very cold and not hot. But when you carry it and put it on top of your cooking pot, what happens after a few minutes? 
you notice that that particular spoon is very hot even though it is not in direct contact with the flame of fire what happened heat has been transferred from the hot pot to the spoon which was cold that means that heat is a kind of energy that transfers or moves from a higher temperature to a lower temperature but when you talk about temperature we are talking about the total internal energy i mean i, I mean not total internal energy i'm talking about the average kinetic energy now if this body now like i was saying is heated what happened each of these molecules will start moving faster they will be moving faster even though they were moving initially but when heat is applied a source of heat is applied they will start moving faster fast, faster than before so at a point what happens these individual molecules on this substance be it solid liquid or gas individual substances we have more kinetic energy if you take the kinetic energy or the yes the kinetic energy of each of these molecules and divide them by the number of molecules you have an average kinetic energy which is increasing as a result of the heat applied and the more the kinetic energy is increasing the more the temperature is increasing so the higher the temperature the higher the kinetic energy therefore we say that the average kinetic energy is temperature so heat is flowing from hotter to cooler why temperature is the average kinetic energy of the body temperature is measured in degrees celsius or kelvin or fahrenheit why heat is measured in joule because it's an energy so they are not the same now when we talk about temperature and its measurement we are looking at we want to consider the fact that we want to consider the fact that temperature to be measured you need to know the lowest temperature and the highest temperature then you can now divide the 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 calibration amongst them that takes us to what we have to call the lower fixed point and the higher or upper fixed point this is hydrometer hypsometer and this one is just a funnel so if you are talking about two major fixed points temperature of any substance let's say for example water water has a zero fixed point and an upper fixed point what i mean is water has a lower fixed point lower fixed point and upper fixed point now the question is what is this lower fixed point and what is the upper fixed point before i go into the textbook definition uh, let's first talk about what it means when we are talking about lower fixed point we are talking about the temperature the the point that is just temperature you are talking about the temperature at which a substance changes from solid to liquid or from liquid to solid it's just a a phase point a phase level between liquid and solid that means if you say lower fixed point of water is zero degrees celsius that means at zero degrees celsius at the temperature of zero water changes to liquid or water changes to solid i mean um solid ice changes to liquid then when we talk about upper fixed point we are talking about the boiling point or temperature of vaporization whereby liquid changes to vapor these are the two major temperatures we mean by fixed point. Now, what does a textbook say of these temperatures? We say that a lower fixed point is the temperature of a melting ice at standard atmospheric pressure. Remember, at standard atmospheric pressure. But when we talk about the upper fixed points, we say that it's the temperature of pure water boiling at standard atmospheric pressure so the temperature must, the water must be pure because if the water is not pure impurities will make them to either reduce or increase when we talk about when we go to the factors affecting the boiling point of water or melting point 
We talk about that. But then, when water is contaminated, is not pure, it's going to affect these temperatures. So, now, for you to be able to find the lower fixed point of a substance, remember, I am only talking about water. This one is for water. When we are talking about, let's say, my favorite, red oil, paraffin, mercury, they have different uh, lower fixed point and upper fixed point. Like mercury, mercury has a lower fixed point of minus 39 degrees Celsius, while its boiling point is about 358 degrees Celsius or 357 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, mercury will start boiling, which is a very high temperature, which is not between this one. Then, uh, the, the difference between 0 and 100 is what is called fundamental interval. Now, and, um, to find this 0 degrees Celsius, we use this funnel for water. This, inside this funnel is a piece of ice. A piece of ice, they are melting and dropping, turning into water. Now, this particular thermometer, a liquid in glass thermometer, the, the value will go low to the point when it will be steady, it will no longer go anywhere. You mark that point as the zero degree. Now, for this one, when you want to measure the upper fixed point of water, we use this system, which is called hypsometer. Now, when this water is boiled with this manometer fixed here and the steam outlet, this one is to measure the pressure and all stuff, then this thermometer is put inside here. Remember, it must not touch water. I had a very one funny experiment. The first day I wanted to carry this experiment in the lab, I didn't know, just a junior student then, I carried this thermometer and dropped inside water, a boiling water, to measure the thermometer and the glass got broken because of expansion of the glass. So you don't place the thermometer inside a boiling water. You place it above it for the steam because you are going to be measuring the steam. So the temperature of the steam, which is 100 degrees Celsius, that of water. Now, when we talk about temperature scales, we are talking about different, um, different measurements for temperature. Different measurements for temperature. Just like we have different measurements for, 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 for length. For example, if you are asked to measure the distance from your house to your school, are you going to use meter rule? Are you going to use meter rule? No. The same way, if you want to measure the temperature of anybody, you can use either this one, Fahrenheit, or degree Celsius, or Kelvin. These are three major temperature scales. The major three temperature scales include Fahrenheit, you are seen on the screen, this F is for Fahrenheit, the Celsius is this one, and this is the Kelvin. Now, this is the freezing point, you see that? And this is for water, only for water. I must say only for water. Water is 32 degree Fahrenheit when you are using Fahrenheit scale. But that same 32 degree Fahrenheit is the same thing as zero degree Celsius when you are using Celsius scale. But zero degree Celsius is the same thing as 273 Kelvin when you are using a Kelvin scale, then, and these are their upper points. These are different scales for measurement. Now we are going to look at how do you convert from one measuring scale to another measuring scale. Now, if we have zero degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius, this one is Celsius scale. Now let's use Fahrenheit. Let me use Fahrenheit. So this is 32 degree Fahrenheit and um, 212 degree Fahrenheit. These are the, the lower and upper fixed point for these temperature scales. Now assuming I want to measure the temperature, let me call it T, then what will it correspond to Fahrenheit? Let me call it F. What will it correspond? If this place is zero for Celsius scale, and this is um, 32 for Fahrenheit, what will it be when it record this T for these two? So what we are going to do, I'm going to do a little proof derivative. I'm going to say that 
from this to this, I'm going to say 100 minus 0 all over t minus 0. So this minus this and this minus this is equivalent as a ratio. It's equivalent to 1, 2 minus 32 all over f minus 32. So this takes us further to say 100 all over t is equal to 180 over f minus 32. So if I clear the fraction, I'm going to have 180t is equal to 100 all over f minus 32. If I divide both sides by 180, so I'm going to continue this at the upper part. So I'm going to have 100 over 180 all over f minus 32. So what, what can divide? This 0 will cancel this 0. Um, 5 cannot go. Yes, 5 is there, but then let me use 2. 2 into this is 5. 2 into this is 9. Therefore, temperature is equal to, I mean, Celsius scale is equal to 5 over 9 all over F minus 32. So at this point, you can convert from Celsius scale to Fahrenheit scale and from Fahrenheit scale to Celsius scale with this formula. And this is a very important formula if you are given a question. Let's say, for example, you have um, a Fahrenheit of 400 degree Fahrenheit, you know. They say, convert this 400 degree Fahrenheit to a value in degree Celsius. Degree Celsius. Yes. Then how do you do it? It's simple. Degree Celsius is given as this T is equal to 5 over 9 bracket. This F is for this 400. I'm going to put 400 here minus 32. So T is equal to 5 over 9 bracket. 400 minus 32 is 8. What is the many here? That should be 9. And then 9 minus 3 is 6. What is money here is 3. So we have 3, 6, 8. Then we now say 5, we have 1840, 1840, divide by 9. So we say that T is 204.4 degrees Celsius. You see? So it is 204.4 degrees Celsius. When it is 400 degree Fahrenheit, you now realize that you now realize that these are different scales for measuring temperature. Now let's talk about temperature and their types. Remember, we've talked about the, their scales, but let's talk about temperature. Now, before we talk about temperature, we have, we, we have um, different kinds of temperature. We have different kinds of thermometer, actually, not temperature. You have different kinds of thermometer. Remember, thermometer is an instrument for measuring temperature. And uh, we have different kinds of thermometer and depending on what you want to measure. So if you have a thermometer, the one we call clinical thermometer, which is like this one, Look at this one. This could be seen as the clinical thermometer, the one for measuring the temperature of a human body in the hospital. But then, will that also measure the temperature of a mercury? That is not going to happen. Therefore, we have different choice of thermometers for a kind of thing we want to measure. Now, the first type of thermometer on the list I have provided here is called liquid in glass thermometer. What does that mean? Liquid inside glass kind of thermometer. 
um, we'll talk about what liquid and why liquid. We have the one we call gas thermometer. Gas thermometer is a kind of thermometer such that the measuring um, substance is gas. Then this one is called thermoelectric thermometer, the metals. Resistant thermometer is about metals and bimetallic, bimetallic thermometer is also metals. That means in order to measure the temperature of a body, we use a thermometer that has either gas, liquid, or metal. You just realize that everything that happens in Earth happens on these three major substances. Let's continue. Now, before we talk about individual types of thermometers, we are going to talk about what we call thermometric substance. Thermometric substance. What do we mean by thermometric substance? A thermometric substance is that thing that is found inside a thermometer that is changing with any change in temperature. That means that thing must be very sensitive for a change in temperature. So you carry that thing inside a freezer, it will just notice that that place is very cold. But water does not behave that way. Water is not sensitive enough. Red oil is not sensitive enough. Granite oil, paraffin, these substances are not sensitive enough to be able to detect any change in temperature. And that is why scientists, we made use of this instrument. This substance is called mercury and alcohol. These are most sensitive substances that can change or increase in volume or expand for any slightest change in temperature of the environment. So this one is um, alcohol. Why did they color it red? We'll talk about that. And this one is mercury. As you can see, you can see it inside. And if this red color, which is inside, which I call the thermometric substance, in this case, the thermometric substance is alcohol. It, it can rise or it can fall as a result of rise and fall in temperature. Now, we have another kind of thermometric substance, which is called copper. Copper is a thermometric substance which will be used in this kind of thermometer. Maybe thermoelectric thermometer, it can also be used in iron must be there, iron must be there, resistance thermometer or bimetallic thermometer. So these are different kinds of substances that can, that can be very fast to changing in temperature. So this one is a copper. You look at the copper. This is a naked copper. I mean, we remove the ones you have in your, your houses for wiring electricity. Now they are doing conduct, um, conduct wiring where you can't see wire around. But then if you open it, remove the plastic they used to cover it, this is the kind of color you see. This is a copper. Why this one is a constantan? Constantan, there is a kind of wire called constantan, though it's not popular like copper because of the kind of wire it is and why, what we use them for. Now, what are these principles working for? The principles of working for these thermometers. The first one, I just have to put them down here, liquid in glass thermometer. Liquid in glass thermometer said that the, there must be a change in the volume of the liquid whenever there is any little change in temperature. Look at what I mean. This particular thing must Increase in volume, that is, the volume must rise on this tube, on this glass, for any rise in temperature. And it must be falling for any fall of temperature. So that is what this um, liquid in glass thermometer. So we, you know you can't use water. Water cannot behave that way. Water is not sharp. It's not fast enough or quick. or Its conductivity is not very fast. That is why water is not there. We are using mercury and alcohol. Then we have another one called gas thermometer. What is the principle? The principle is that at constant volume, pressure of gas increases with temperature. The pressure increases with increase in temperature. And that led to the measurement of gas pressure with respect to temperature. So that is it. And uh, what kind of thermometric substance is this gas like? Is helium or hydrogen. These are the major two thermometric substances we use for gas thermometer. Then we have another one called thermoelectric 
thermoelectric um, thermometer is this one, a hot and cold junction. Look at this, look at this hot, cold junction, hot junction. Whenever there is a hot and cold junction, it spark off a current or a voltage between this iron and copper, you see? Iron is a thermometric substance and copper is a thermometric substance. And because of that, due to this difference in temperature, there is a change in the voltage or current of this wire, which is measured by this millivoltmeter because it's very small, or maybe a galvanometer. Now, that is what this hot and cold of the couple metal is what I mean. Now, he said that a hot and cold junction of couple metal produce a current which depend on the temperature difference between the hot and um, cold junctions. Another one is the resistance, of course, electrical resistance of a metallic wire must change with any change in temperature. So that is why sometimes the wire becomes very hot when electrical current is passing through it because it changes with change in temperature. So the higher the electrical current, then the temperature increasing. Now, the liquid in glass thermometer, I have said much about this. This is the thermometer we are talking about. This is called glass, liquid in glass thermometer. This could be alcohol because the alcohol that is almost colored because of its nature, it is colored. Now, I have talked about this thermocouple, thermometer, junction and hot junction, and the two of them spark off a current which is measured by this voltmeter. Then this is the gas thermometer. Inside this gas, inside this place, it could be hydrogen or it could be helium gas. And then they push down to push this mercury. If you have learned what we explain on gas pressure, you know more. And this is open up at this open part for a pressure from the atmosphere to push this mercury down. And uh, you have to hold this place up, raise it up in order to bring this gas to a constant volume. Remember. The principle is that the volume must be constant. The volume of this gas must be constant. I have to bring you back to that point where we say that where we say that change in no where we say that at constant volume, very important. Pressure of gas increases with temperature. So everything you do here while carrying this experiment is to ensure that the gas here does not go too far away. So you have to make maintain it with the volume of the container. Remember the, that um, gas, the volume of gas is not definite. You take the shape of the container. Now, let's talk about temperature scale, um, absolute temperature, or absolute scale of temperature. When we talk about absolute zero, what is absolute zero? When I talk about absolute zero, please do not say it is zero degree Celsius. No. This is just zero. Zero in the sense that it is a Celsius scale we are using to measure. Now, re remember, this is zero for Celsius scale, but it is 32 for Fahrenheit scale. And it is 273 for Kelvin scale. So this zero is just when we use Celsius scale to measure. So if I use Fahrenheit to measure the, the lower fixed point of water, I will have 32. So when we are talking about zero, it's not absolute zero. Absolute zero means the zero you get when you use Kelvin scale to measure the temperature of a body. And at zero temperature in a Kelvin scale, no life can survive it. I mean, imagine you have a temperature of minus 273. Okay, just imagine this. The temperature in your freezer, the temperature of water in your freezer is zero degree Celsius. Now, if you consider the temperature of what we have in Africa, um, we talk about in Nigeria and the East, to be precise, we are talking about you having a temperature of zero degree Celsius as very cold to you. Imagine you drinking an ice block, taking an ice block, taking it. You know that it's very cold. But let me tell you, that temperature is nothing close to the kind of temperature we have in other parts of the world. Canada, Russia, USA, and, and other countries where you have a temperature as low as minus 89 degrees Celsius. You can imagine. 
You can imagine zero degree Celsius. Zero degree Celsius as the temperature from inside your freezer or fridge, not even fridge, freezer, blocked food, zero degree Celsius. Now, a temperature can go as low as minus one, minus two, minus 18. And human beings, in Russia in 2018 woke up, you saw how everybody was complaining about cold. I mean, some of people that went there. So that is how low you can imagine what is minus 273 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, scientists say that nobody, no human being, no thing exists. Because the kinetic energy at that point is zero. Energy is zero at that point. And if energy is zero, maybe you're going to watch some fictions, some movies fictions, to bring back to life such a body in that kind of temperature. Because it doesn't have any recorded amount of heat. At least for now. Because science keeps growing and changing. Now, let's talk about this measurement um, temperature scales. You say convert, conversion between temperature scales. You say convert 120 degrees Fahrenheit to that of Celsius. Remember, I've given you the formula for this before, where we said that T is going to be 5 over 9 bracket F minus 32. This is the formula. When you put it F, you put F here, 120 minus 32, and then simplify this factor, you will get your answer. Then, look at this one. Let's do this one, which I have not done its kind. A temperature scale has an upper point of 260. So, a temperature scale has 260 millimeter of mercury at the upper fixed point and lower fixed point of 50 millimeter. Okay? They didn't say millimeter of mercury. So, let me remove this one. We now said, what will be the reading? on this scale when thermometer reads 49 degrees Celsius. So they have brought in Celsius scale. That is the meaning. They have brought in Celsius scale. They have brought in, so I'm going to say zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius is for Celsius scale. So at this temperature, which is 49 degrees Celsius, what would be this temperature? I don't know. I'm going to call it T. So I'm going to still do the same thing as I did when I was doing the proof between Fahrenheit and degree Celsius. So I'm going to say 260 minus 50 all over T minus 50 is going to be equal to 100 minus 0 all over 49 minus 0. So this is going to be 260 minus this is going to be 210 all over T minus 50 equal to 100 over 49. Okay? I will cancel 0 here. I will cancel 0 here. So I'm having 21 all over T minus 50 is equal to 10 over 49. I will clear the fraction. So I'm going to say this times this. I will have 1029. This is 1029 is equal to 10t minus 500. So I'm going to So I'm going to have 1029 plus 500 is equal to 10t. T is going to be 9251 divided by 10 is going to be 15.29 degrees Celsius. So when this thermometer is measuring 14, when Celsius scale is measuring 49 degrees Celsius, then this thermometer is going to be measuring 15.29 degree. Thank you. We have come to the end of this class. But remember, before we go, we have to take some other questions from Exam Guide app. And this one I'm using JAM. So let's take some questions. Now, you said high thermal capacity, high sensitivity, easy readability, accuracy over a wide range of temperature. From the statement above, the quality of a good thermometer are, all of them must be there because high thermal capacity, of course, so that it does not break. High sensitivity, of course, so that it should be able to sense that there is a change in temperature 
and it will react easily. Easy readability, of course, it has to be a substance that you can see through the glass. And I'm choosing A. A is my perfect answer. Let's go to one that suits our lesson. OK, so which of the, which, what is the equivalent of 20K in Celsius scale? In Celsius scale, if you, in Celsius scale, T for temperature for Celsius is going to be, no? If I say Kelvin, I won't do that. Let me use T for Kelvin. Kelvin temperature is T for Celsius temperature plus 273. This is the formula used for converting from Kelvin to Celsius scale. So if the temperature given there is already 20K, which is this one. So I'm going to say 20 is equal to 2TC plus 273. So TC, that is the Celsius scale, is going to be 20 minus 273. So 273 minus 20, which is 3, 5. Two. So we are going to have TC is going to be minus 253 Celsius degree Celsius. That is D. Okay, let's take one more. You say a, a change in temperature of 45 degree Celsius is equivalent to a change in temperature to Kelvin scale. Okay, um, the temperature given that is, is in degree Celsius. In degree Celsius, we are going to... If it's already given in degree Celsius, I'm going to say that temperature for Kelvin is going to be temperature for degree Celsius plus 273. So temperature for Kelvin is going to be, this one is for degree Celsius, and that is 45. I'm going to have 45 plus 273. So temperature for Kelvin is going to be 8, 11, right one, put one here, and that is Kelvin, 318. 318 is here. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the ZAM Guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that makes learning fun. It is a must-have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the video to people that will benefit from it. Bye.